Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about tabletop again. I think we got two days in a row where we talked about tabletop. Well, it's just, it's just the hottest thing ever, apparently. Tabletop's the hottest thing ever. Yeah, we're going to talk about critical role damage. Are they going to unionize? Are they going to unionize? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Go they, ahead. they got lots of money. I don't think they need to unionize. We're going to talk about them making money and people being salty about them making money again because it seems like there's a lot of damage control going on. For those of you who have not been paying attention, uh, Twitch was hacked and a list of its top streamers was uh, posted, I think, on 4chan. And it turns out that Critical Role is Twitch's highest paid streaming channel. Now, this isn't one person. There are a lot of people associated with Critical Role. Uh, they have a staff of 30 plus now, I guess. Mm -hmm. They're basically a Hollywood production company. Yeah, I wasn't surprised by this. No. I was, I'm not surprised, I guess, either, by the reaction to this. People are losing their shit. Because I remember when they were out there on crowdfunding, like, help us get our show made. And here they probably had a deal the whole time. Yeah, that was that was one thing I said. But you know what? I can't really fault them for that. I they, don't either. I'm like, hey, you know, it's a business. Yeah. This, they, is, this is capitalism, guys. This is capitalism. But the thing is, is the crowd they cater to. Doesn't a lot, like capitalism. A lot of them don't like <laughs> capitalism. And a lot of them now are complaining on Twitter that there's not enough diversity with Critical Role, and they're complaining about the amount of money, that well, Critical Role doesn't need your money. There are a lot of, they're, they're, it's a very white group by the looks of it. Um, and there's only three women to five men. And don't you know, diversity just means women now. That's true. If you if you go ask like the cartoon you know, people that that's women, um, so that they clearly aren't diverse enough because they're definitely outnumbered. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this and this kind of damage control because there's a lot going on with Critical Role right now. They have a new D and D uh, campaign book coming out. Uh -huh. um, they have their animated series coming out on Amazon. This is the one that was Kickstarted, but it's also on Amazon, which owns Twitch. So you know who knows what's going on there. Um, and that being said, though, before we get into it any further. Uh, you know, we have 237,000 subs, not as many as Critical Role. No, I'm looking, there's not a lot of body diversity there either. Either. Where I that's are, cancelable, as it's a cancelable offense. Where are all the fat people? We need um, more fat there's people. There's not a lot of body diversity. There's not a lot of, uh, shade diversity. <laughs> well, that's the biggest complaint, but I, I okay. I just think it's funny. So we've been talking more about tabletop. We've been talking about Critical Role in regards to the culture that, that Critical Role has helped bring into the tabletop scene for better or for worse. You know, we could argue about that. That's a lot of other videos. That being said, uh, you know, you're allowed to be a uh, capitalist. You're allowed to make money. Yeah, well, we support that. We support, you know, making money. People were shocked if they were making that much money. Um, and also, you know, and I said before, we've actually met Matt Mercer. He's not a bad guy. He's actually well, pretty nice. We only nice met guy. him for like a few hours. Yeah, I don't know if days. he went. I don't know if he went home and kicked puppies or not. But I, I mean, he doesn't strike me as a type. No, he seemed very nice. I, yeah. So I mean, we're not, you know, slamming on them, but the audience that they've cultivated. Again, a lot of them probably anti-capitalist. Uh, so it came as a shock to them that they were getting paid the amount of money they were getting mm -hmm. paid. Um, nine million, nine million dollars in what, three years on yeah, Twitch. But here's the thing that's over three years and you right. have how many people involved. People don't understand this. There's a lot more to it. But what I think is interesting was this was announced like days ago, like, yes. like 10 days ago, 11 yep. days ago. And then no one really talked about too much for the last few days. But then it got announced that they're getting a new uh, D and D book that's based on them. Um, they're getting a movie. Yeah, well, that movie too. But look here, if you look, a lot of the a uh, lot of the discussion came back uh, about five days ago when it got announced. There's a crossover D and D book with them. Yeah, and then now there's a movie that's been announced today. But you can see the last like three to four days they've been ramping up the you know trying to twist the narrative because they were clearly heading for something, and it's probably the movie. Yeah, so this came at a really bad time. The leak came at a really bad time for them because they're like, oh, shit, because now there's... Was it on purpose by somebody? I don't know. Um, my understanding was that the people that leaked uh, the Twitch info, they were like, hey, we want to just kind of level the playing field uh, for other streamers. And Twitch is a dumpster fire. I mean, it really is. We, we've done videos about Twitch where mm -hmm. they'll ban you for like any little thing. Now, I was surprised that Critical Role is their their biggest uh, streamer. But again, you know, $9 million spread out over three years with a crew of 30-some people yeah, living and, in California. And how many projects they're doing. And how many projects they're doing. So they've definitely turned into a, a, a cottage industry here. But that's just their money they got from 
there. We don't know what money they got for their book, for their movie. Right. How much Amazon, is it Amazon or yeah, Netflix? Amazon, Amazon yeah. paying for their show. Yep. I'm sure there's a lot more money than you're aware of. But it's funny to me because I'm just like, you know, hey, if they can do it, more power to them. Yeah. But yeah. the internet, the people that back them are just like, shit. This happens a lot. We've seen people that are like, you know, hey, we want to support so-and-so. But as soon as they get bigger, then they're like, you're too big. You've sold out. You know, it's like, well, mm -hmm. the problem is, you know, the cost of doing business is you get to a point where it's like, well, we got to hire more people. We got to borrow money from this person. We got to do this. We got to do that. Now we're a company. Look at Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth, prime example. Now, in their case, they sold out. And I think that was their biggest mistake. I think if they had not sold out, I think it would have been a totally different ball game. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I, who knows? Maybe they'll maybe Critical Role Inc. will sell out you know, at some point. Cash your chips. You know, um, so this is coming from CBR. How Critical Role has expanded from a D and D play show to a media empire. Oh, the Twitter's got another meltdown. Yeah, they began streaming their D and D campaign in 2015. Not even uh, they could begin to imagine where the endeavor would take them. Cast has often spoken of their doubts that anyone would even tune in to watch a bunch of nerds play D and D on Twitch. The risk they took panned out in ways no one would believe. Now, to be fair, uh, most of these people were already quasi famous elsewhere. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like a bunch. Actually, they kind of uh, ripped off Will Wheaton had the tabletop show. Yeah. And it was kind of like their version of, now he was playing different tabletop games, but they were like, oh, let's just do D&D. &D. Right. But it is kind of like that. Like, you know, it was all like these, you know, it's a bunch of plucky no nobodies who just got together to play a game. That's not exactly how it happened. Yeah. So they started out with Pathfinder, uh, played Pathfinder uh, for hours on end when they had time to get together escalated into a weekly live stream that tens of thousands of fans tune into on a regular basis. Their setup starting out wasn't the greatest, but it wasn't long before they had their own set and crew to make sure the technical difficulties became as few as they were far between. And that happens. You, you know, you start making money. If you want to keep making money, you got to, you know, uh, kick some money into it. You, you know, it takes to, money to make yeah. money. As the Critter community began to grow... Cast of gamers saw that they were not only devoted but generous and supportive. Uh, they talked about that too. This is coming up in the news a lot too. They're given, you know, money of poverty and all that. And there's a lot of damage control going on because people uh -huh. are pissed that they found out. And that happens that's all. That's only one of their income streams. That's only one. They made like $12 million on Kickstarter for the animated series. Now, again, that seems like a lot of money until. It's really not. If you, if you knew how much the average animated series cost. You know, that's not there. There are shows out there that cost over a million dollars an episode, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, I think Amazon's definitely kicking some money into this, too. Um, so, yeah, they're talking about how generous they are. I said uh, in 2019, four years after they launched their online stream, Critical Role started a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, originally, they were trying to get seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. They wound up with like twelve million. Yeah, and that seven hundred fifty dollars was thousand dollars was to make one episode. Yeah, um, and, and and that's, that's about probably right. fair. That's about right. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely right. So production for a 10 episode animated series uh, called The Legend of Vox Machina has been underway since 2019. Amazon Prime is airing it in early 2022, but it's not just that. But wait, there's more. Critical Role is not stopping with comics and anime. Oh, they have an, a comic book, too? Yeah, they have a comic book, too. Uh, an, an animated series. Uh, Matt Mercer has written campaign guides set in his world and is partnering with Wizards of the Coast in 2022. <coughs> Sorry. Mm. <laughs> in November, Penguin Random House. Oh, yeah. Well, good luck getting your books and get them out nice. Yeah, right. Is going to release uh, uh, Kip and Kin, the first Critical Role novel. Oh, my God. So yeah, like I book. said, good luck getting that out to the stores nicely. Uh, they have their own tabletop publishing company in late 2020, releasing their Campaign 2-inspired board game with plans for several other games. Why do they even need Dungeons & Dragons at this point? They really don't. They very easily could just... And I, I mentioned this in another, another video. I'm like, why... Don't they just create their own system at this point? And then they don't have to give wizards anything. Mm -hmm. But they have a partnership with them now. Probably. But I'd be like, yeah. Okay, just... so people are melting down because it looked like they had a lot of money on Twitch. But then you figure they're getting all money from all this stuff, too. So they have a shit ton of money. Yes. But to be fair, they earned that money. You know what I mean? They, ha they did the work. This happens when you have a platform, you know, and, and you're successful. I mean, even all this money that they're earning, if you would put this entire group, and there's a lot of them, 
and you would put them up against individual gaming YouTubers, I guarantee you a lot of the video game YouTubers, individuals make more money. Probably. Um, you know. I just think it's funny because these people are melting down over this whole thing and they're mad. And now their new thing is, <laughs> what I, I joked about the diversity at the beginning. That's their new thing to get mad about now. Yeah, so it's not just the money. It's not just the money people are having a problem with. And, and that was a video I did before that they were mad about the money. Um, they said they're not enough, not enough POCs in critical role. Well, there doesn't seem to be, honestly. Um, you know, so they're real. I mean, I, yeah, OK. <laughs> I'll, I'll people, give you that. People overlooked it until they found out they made money. And now they're like, well, how dare they? You know, I, think that's, I just think it's funny. Have you stepped aside in critical role for a POC or LGBTQIA represent, uh, representative in place of your cis whiteness so yet? So basically what happens, this is like typical with Twitter. Yeah. As soon as they find out someone's bigger than they thought, yeah. now they demand representation and they demand a platform. Are they going to demand these people get canceled if they don't put like pronouns in their bio and everything else? That That's usually what happens. Like they weren't really paying attention. They were like, oh, it's just a ner bunch of nerds playing D&D. &D. And it's like, whoa. How much money are they making? Some of these people they're complaining probably don't even watch the show. They probably never watched the well, show. They're just like, oh, they make a lot of money. This Ryan here points out the critical role um, started a diverse cast. They only have whites is is false. They all they almost always have POC representation, both guest spots and one shots. They aren't perfect, but they're aware of this and they try to address it when they can. So basically, the people who build this up, who've been there since the beginning, should just step aside and hand their seats over. And they're like, no, they can't do that. So instead, they make sure they bring people in to make sure they're covering the diversity issue. You. But when you pander to this audience and they get a reason to turn on you, this is what happens. Yeah. Um, and I expect more of this. And money money is always, always, always a catalyst in this. I mean, we, we see this in comics, too, you know, having worked in comics. Anytime anyone, anytime a crab gets out of the, the bucket, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it becomes an issue. And once people see how much money is being made, this happened in web comics a lot, too. You know, web comics, it was weird that everybody was kind of equal, but then you would have like less than 1% of web comics that would actually get big and they would have, you know, a uh, successful merch business or they'd be getting TV deals or getting book deals or whatever. And if you became one of those people, then it was expected that you were going to help everybody no, else. Well, I, what I've noticed was when you became one of those people, that they stopped, they stopped talking to you. Yeah. You were no longer their quote unquote friend. Um, this Matt kind of says the right thing. He's like, if you cut out half this group in order to replace it with the required number of POC and LGBTQIA members, that it's just critical role and name only. Yeah. It's they're making space for additional creators and players to help boost their content. So, you know, that's what he's saying. It's like, you can't, you can't demand that it have them be replaced. Or they're not going to be who they are. You yeah. know, and it, and it's, you know, and they're doing other, they're, they're trying to, you know, help other people in other ways. I just think it's funny because once again, you know, as soon as they realize it's a bigger platform than they thought, then they're demanding that they, you know, they get representation. They're demanding that they, you know, you have to have these people on or you have to fire half your people and hire these kind of people because we said so. But, but the thing is, there's no guarantee that just because you have people with the right uh, check marks that the show would be as successful. Exactly. That's what that map is saying. Um, and, you know, I mean, that's, that's the thing too. But yeah, now that they're on the radar, now that they're going bigger than just being an online show, now that they're becoming like a, a Hollywood production studio, basically, uh, now everybody is going to come for them. Mm -hmm. But this is, again, and I'm not saying it's right, and I'm not saying neener neener or anything like that. I'm saying this is kind of the audience they cultivated. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of happened with Noel Stevenson and she too, where it was like, and she, ironically, I think was on Critical Role. Oh, before. probably. Guest, guest spot or something I like that. I wish the camera's on, my eyes are rolling hard right now. <laughs> but... But, you know, you have a lot of like uh, uh, cartoon showrunners that kind of cater to the Twitter crowd when they're useful. And then when they become more successful, then they get, I guess, I guess the Owl House uh, showrunner quit Twitter or something because she was getting harassed, you know? Oh, I mean, probably. Well, yeah, why? It's not her fault. No, uh, there are lots of crazy stuff going on. They always find dirt and it's, you know, so now I'm waiting for the next thing to be like, let's go dig up dirt on all the Critical Role cast members to, you know, show them a bunch of racists they are. You know, because, you know, we the show's not what we think it should be. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, pretty go, much. Go make your own show. Exactly. No, nobody's stopping you. You can go make but your own show. But it's funny because another damage control, like, no, it was a big story as soon as it broke. Everybody had their, a hissy shit fit about them making too much money. It laid down for like a few days. And now it's back because they got a book deal with D&D &D, and they have a TV show coming out now. And everybody's pissed. 
Yeah. Or a movie, I'm sorry, the TV show we knew. A movie, and everybody's pissed. Everybody's pissed, so anyway. That sounds uh, like every day. Yeah, this that is- a day that ends in one. This is definitely damage control. Pee is what? <laughs> pee is what? Oh, maybe I need to drink more. <laughs> it's more like powder. Okay. We're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.